So, uh, I thought to go to return to Chundakirti. <clears throat> well, number one, that with the notes on Songaba, uh, it's possible to read Songaba to yourselves and delve into the meditation that is being directed by it. Uh, I think an important breakthrough with regard to the Tsongkhapa section is that is the word being various translated as between and intermediate and range. You know, the uh, the area between the toes and the heels, does it mean between, uh, or does it mean the range f from, and, and what does from mean, from the toes to the heels? In other words, from behind the toes to in front of the heel, or does it mean the range from the toes, meaning including the toes, through the heels. Now that word um, often means range, the range that includes the toes and the heel. And uh, it seems that the word there means the whole range rather than some part in between. So, I think that uh, we can proceed on with more in Chandrakirti. I have edited a bit more than what I sent you, but I don't think we're going to get to that point today. If we do, I'll point out where I have edited more. So, we're in the, object, the objector's position, and as you'll remember, these headings are headings of the, the material in green is superimposed from Tsongkhapa, and that's why these headings are in green. They're merely superimposed from Tsongkhapa's commentary. Uh, I found them very helpful and therefore I superimposed them into Chandrakirti's own commentary. Um, uh, you who were with us earlier will remember that in India uh, it was not the custom to create uh, tables of contents except for uh, giving chapters titles. All you got with it was a chapter title and not breakdowns into parts of the chapters. Whereas in Tibet it you could almost say it became fashionable to provide this kind of a crutch <coughs> to give readers like us and hopefully meditators like us uh, clues as to what's going on. There's speculation that this practice of breaking text down into their various parts and announcing what's going on came from a Korean's writing in Chinese where he breaks down what's going on in the Sutra Unraveling the Thought 
intricately. It's a very beautiful uh, book that he wrote in Chinese and was translated into Tibetan. And there's a famous commentary by a Tibetan on it. There's not only the translation of that Chinese Korean text in Chinese into Tibetan, but also a famous commentary on it um, in written, of course, in Tibetan. It's bio Tibetan in Tibetan. And there's speculation by an oh an Austrian. His name escapes me right now. That the this practice in Tibet got going through that route. Speculation, because it may turn out that it got going a good deal earlier than that. I found it, I find it very helpful. But of course I've put it in a different color to so that we can keep it in mind that Chandrakirti, of course, did not do this. So we're in the objector's position, and we went over this earlier, good time ago. The objector just makes the simple point of being gone over is being gone over. Nagarjuna said, had just said in the first stanza, it isn't being gone over. It isn't even known. That no such thing is known. When you look at it the way he looked at it in the first stanza. stanza. I just said stanza. That's because I come from New England or a certain part of New England. So the objector doesn't have anything fancy to say. The objector just says, where, where there's movement, there's going. And it is on the being going over of a goer. And as you'll remember, there's a lot to be said about you know, does you um, by Baba Vega and so forth? Does this mean of a goer and blah blah blah? But that's not our point here. Not on the going over, nor on the not yet going over. We already know that's obvious. Therefore, going is on the being going over. So. The objector is shouting, hey, duh, there's movement, movement, isn't there? You're not going to deny that, are you? Are you so stupid as that? Really, it's, and so the, the objection is continued. So <laughs> what kind of movement am I talking about? raising up and putting down the foot. <laughs> and as I was saying last time, this is a bit like marching. <laughs> We're being very careful about thinking about maybe first putting down the toes and then the heel. <laughs> but <laughs> this is a, a very simple description. <laughs> and and we have to, you know, as we've been saying earlier, we have to notice what's simple, what is simple, and what isn't simple. What's being added, and what's just, what's, and what, what's simple that we're being asked to notice. On the very area where there is movement of a goer who is proceeding, Going exists on that very area also. 
Okay, that's simple enough. And this movement does not exist on the path already gone over, nor on the path not yet gone over, but exists just on the being gone over. Okay, nothing earth-shattering about that. Hence, going exists on just the being going over. <laughs> this is sort of like, say it again. <laughs> you know, you want to shout, say it again. <laughs> For the place where going is apprehended. Now, why this is in uh, italic is uh, because this is playing on the meaning of go, go being cognate with the Sanskrit gum. You see, it begins with G. Gum, which is has the double meaning of to know. Well, it just occurred to me that no begins with K-N and gum begins with G. Um, and maybe there's some connection with the verbal root gum and cano. Uh, and so Chandrakirti is using the word apprehended because Nagarjuna is playing on the pun uh, that gum can mean both go and no. One of the meanings of no, K-N-O-W, is apprehend. So, Chandrakiti is deliberately using the word apprehend as a substitute for go, going. Where going is being gone, you see, is the being gone over. And it is being affected by the action of going. Actually, even affected here, you see, could be in italic. Therefore, going exists on just the being gone over. Now, Chandrakirti is expanding here in the uh, mouth of the uh, objector. He's using going as apprehended rather than is being gone. And it is being affected by the action of going. Therefore, going exists just on the being gone over. You know, the, the objector is saying, hey, come on. Here, now I'm wondering why I'm pausing. Um, I have many times thought that this should be set off, that this is uh, Chandrakirti's commentary on the objector's position. Hmm. Set off by a new paragraph, you know, that he's stepping in and telling us, here the one word gum, in gum humane, which in Tibetan is gom, which means the being gone over, has the sense of knowing that the area is being affected by an action of going. The other root gum in gati, meaning gatis, drawa, going, means proceeding to another place. Now, is, it, is this in the mouth, you know, as the translator, I have to pay attention to how I, you know, where I make the paragraphs and all. I wouldn't just make a paragraph, I'd, I'd make a, an extra space also. Is this in the mouth of the objector, or is in this in the mouth of Chandrakirti pointing out 
making a comment on what the objector is saying. Huh? It seems like it's the latter. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. So we're doing various things here. We're honing a translation. We're we're finding stuff to meditate on. What is our main goal? to figure out how to meditate on this. What's the goal of the meditation short range, short range aim is to search for going. And not find it. And in the Gelupa description, when you don't find it, you know, when you don't find it, this is described in their, we have to call it a psychological system, it's described as the finding of a non-finding. Finding the non-finding of going. In other words, Finding means realizing. Finding the non-finding. In some, I don't know whether it's worldwide systems, but certainly in some Tibetan systems, this is not called a finding of the non-finding. It's called merely a non-finding. They say you don't find a non-finding. You don't realize a non-finding. You don't realize anything. There's just the non-finding. In this, not just this, in any Gelupa system, you are realizing something. You're finding the non-finding. Indeed, whatever system you want to talk about, it has tremendous impact. So in one way, it makes a lot of sense to say that you're realizing something. Now, why do some systems not want to say it's, it's a finding? Because realizing immediately sets up the sense that you have a subject and an object. And what you're leading toward is a blending of the consciousness with the non-finding. In When you get to direct cognition of emptiness, you see the word cognition is there, direct realization of emptiness. The consciousness, as Ngong Lengden which the video audience can see over my shoulder here, the one nearest my shoulder, said over and over again, the consciousness and the object of the consciousness are like water poured in water. Fresh water poured in fresh water. Not one dirty water and one fresh water, because you could distinguish those two, at least for a while. But fresh water poured in fresh water, indistinguishable. So the consciousness and that which is being realized, emptiness, are indistinguishable. So the vocabulary, some people don't want to use the vocabulary of realize. Even if, if we use the, even if that which is being undergone, <laughs> you, you got to haul out some sort of vocabulary, has tremendous impact. 
and has tremendous impact on your life. And when you come out of this state, it has an effect, effect, affect, for a while. And while this, the functioning of that is still being undergone, it has an impact. And that can cease, you know, when you're in early stages of development. And then it fades. I've heard Christians talk about, you know, some deep realizations that fade. And this indicating the need for God because all of these fade. Whereas in this Buddha system, this indicates need for re-entering it and strengthening it and developing it to the point where it never ceases. You remain in it totally and within that are capable of appearing and helping. You know, you might say, well, that sounds like a fantasy. Okay, so the long-term aim is to be able to remain in direct cognition, which means realization, another word for it, and at the same time be able to appear and form and help others. So, don't let the, of course, we cannot let the need for uh, creation of a good translation uh, interfere. But the creation of the good translation creates something that can continually help for the, the meditation the words won't be a mess. But if too much attention is paid to the uh, good translation, one can think that the aim of our meeting merely is to have a good translation. And of course, somebody like me who, uh, you know, wants to contribute a lot to translation uh, can get, of course, too distracted. As Kizan Sambo said, looking across his desk one day, he said the equivalent of, uh, with regard to <laughs> uh, stuff, some stuff that was merely words to him, oh, all of this is practical to you. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> But he was surprised that, see, he had studied in uh, in Gomang, in uh, at Drebon, and, and had left it for Nyingma because it was more practical. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what he was, I was may, I may be more practical than he was with regard to some Gelugpa teachings. But it would be an exaggeration to say that all, oh, that would be true for all. Okay, that's the um, objector's position. So, then we have Tsongba's outline, which we talked a little bit about last time when we were reading Tsongba. And you notice I changed the, <laughs> the the word for word to term, just because it uh, works a little bit better later on. So then, within Chandrakirti, and knowing you can read, I won't read that out loud. The 
table of contents. So, Chandrakirti's answer to his own hypothetical layout of what's going on in Nagarjuna's text. So, what he's saying is, you might ascribe it that way. You know, you might, <laughs> you might say that, but the being gone over is not being gone over. So, to answer that way, to explain this, Nagarjuna says, Gamyamanasya gamanam katam namopapatsyate, Gamyamane dvigamanam. This is the less a less well-known reading of the Sanskrit, apparently, but Tibetan doesn't follow this reading. Gamyamane dvigamanam yada naibo papajyade. Kangse dro meba yi gomba teba mechero. Definitely the Tibetan cannot be read. Maybe I'll try. Gomla <laughs> draw yimbani. You know, there's no way you can read that like Gamyamanasya Gamanam Katam Nama Namopa. You know, you just can't get into it. <laughs> you know, you can tell <laughs> Nagarjuna was having fun. <laughs> You accept the designation, uh, it's actually, I've been switching these, I've been switching the translation more over toward the Tibetan. You accept the expression, the being gone over, just because of its having an action of going. And you propound that the being gone over, it, the being gone over is being gone over, is being gone, is being gone over. As uh, Boris said, you've, you've, gotten, you've gotten us used to being, is being gone over. Don't switch it to is being gone. But the Sanskrit is just is being gone. It's gamyate. You know, there's no word over. But is being gone. It's a it's a present passive. Gum ya makes it passive. Te is third person singular. Gum Gum ye te. Katam nam. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, okay, uh, is being gone over. Um, there is one action of going, and due to it, let us indeed allow the path to be, oh, let's see, does it say designated? Oh, to be uh, designated this, okay, expressed as, expressed as the being gone over. But it is not reasonable for a further is being gone, the verb, to have a relation with an action on the being gone over. You know, it, are you going to call the area? You are calling the area the being gone over. So there's an action of going on it. It's being gone over, right? So where, where are you going to get the action for that? 
Somebody's going on it, right? You, you claim. Now, in terms of meditation, you got to get into... If you're going to play the game, or if you're going to try out the game, then you may be thinking, no, I don't even want to try it out. These are just words. You got to imagine the area, the person going on it, and you say, okay, the going is being used up in, in making the area the being going over. And then you got this, you know, the paddling of the, of the feet or the raising up, no, raising up and putting down of the feet. Okay, sort of like marching. And then that's the going. There's a going there and there's a going that makes the area and you just you know if you went into your doctor and said you know the doctor said you look distressed and what are you distressed about and you said and you explained this you know the doc would the doctor have a pill for it would the doctor want to prescribe it you know give you a give you a break you know Say, uh, how, how are you? Are you sleeping through the night? I have a psychologist friend here. He's I don't know. He must be sixty, and he always begins the meal with, "How's your sleep?" And he carries his business over <laughs> to the to to his friends. To <laughs> it's it's like. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, give it up. <laughs> I should, I should answer one day and say, well, you know, I'm trying to work out this thing about going. And when I imagine going, you know, it's, oh my God. But it's not reasonable for a further to have a relation with an action of going. You know, picture it. You know, here you say, you're just working on a translation. Okay, picture it. You have one action of going. Well, how, how it's going to be used to make the being gone over the area, the being gone over. Is it going to be sort of like some kind of mayonnaise that you spread to the legs and to the area? Mayonnaise or air or you sort of want to do that, don't you? So you see the going is down there with the, it's been ascribed down there in the area gone over. Being gone over, sorry. Being gone over. So then it, it can't be up there with the goer. Because there's only one going and it's down there. And it's like, wow. Whew. So now, uh, to have a relation with an action on the being going over. So you get the picture. Therefore, Nagarjuna says, how indeed would going be feasible on the being going over? He states the reason when a being gone over without going is not feasible. Now we're getting the picture. Now really, picture. Not just words or maneuvers. You got to picture the goings down there in the area. 
So it can't be up there with the legs. So now you can imagine where the next stanza is going to go. It's going to be up there with the legs. Now imagine it. Really. You see, this is my beauty. You see, I am able to do this imagination. It's up there with the legs in the next stanza. Thus it can't be, I, I moved it up there with the legs. So the area no longer can be the being gone of. Because there's, there's nothing down there in the area that would make it the being gone over. Because there's only one action. You see, I can imagine it. My imagination is free to be used. For me to use. I'm not afraid of it. I can use it. I can picture it. And then if I want to stop it, I can stop it. I can stop the game. Like, I'm not going to play this. It's a junk game. <laughs> But, hey, this is pretty cool. That's my, that's my opinion on it. But I'm not saying one needs to, to give in to the game. But a lot of games I decided aren't very fun, not much fun. I used to watch my brothers playing ball all the time. Basketball, football. Baseball, ping pong, playing ball all the time. And she said that one of the children has the same kind of motion. Yeah. Because they're playing ball all the time. Yeah. I used to, I learned them all. Played football. I didn't play baseball, really. I thought throwing a hard ball at your head was softball. I played a bit more of softball, but gave them all up pretty, pretty quickly. Ended up with soccer, but I wouldn't let them, I wouldn't hit after I felt it. But that's not good for you. Made my own, you know, played it, but then made my own decisions. Without going, what is without, no, here we are, the kind Chandrakirti. What does without going mean? It means devoid of going. Hey, <laughs> okay. Uh, what being gone over means, that which is presently being gone over. Wow, you know, this is really something Droshimba in, in Tibetan, Droshimba, which is really conveys the Tibetan. It's active, it's uh, present active, but Tibetans, you know, doesn't spend a lot of time distinguishing um, tenses. I've heard more than Chinese, but certainly less than Sanskrit. So Nagarjuna's thought is, because the one action of going is required. Now we've already got the picture, right? Well, let's confirm it. Because the one action of going, oh, I, I think I changed this. Because, because, a little different from what you're, from what you're reading. Because the one action of going is required for the being gone over. And because there is no section, second action of going, therefore, 
when this expression is being gone over is not feasible without a going. The meaning of this statement, the being gone over is being gone over, is not complete. Yeah, I, I changed that a bit. Figured I could be more literal. Because the one action of going is required for the being gone over. And because there is no second action of going, comma, therefore, comma, when this expression is being gone over, is not feasible without a going, the meaning of the statement, the being gone over is being gone over, is not complete. I didn't think we'd get this far. Since there is no second action, only the being gone over occurs. Is being gone over, does not. I should probably add occur. In brackets. Chandrakirti is very uh, kind in repeating the obvious. So can I ask a question? Please. Is it the case that here there is like a bracketed or implicit inherently existent action, inherently existent going that's not being said, so that's why... Yes. And it'll be interesting to look at Tsongkhapa and see what he, as you're saying, brackets in. Um, give him what he's bracketed in so far and goes to considerable, <laughs> the typical English word is pain to bracket in. Um, and it's interesting that Chandrakirti doesn't bother to bracket it in. It's as if he wants to put our, push our face into the non-finding. And Tsongkhapa wants us to know that indeed we have to experience the total non-finding. You know, when you are experiencing the non-finding of going, nothing is appearing to your mind except that non-finding. The dependent arising of going is not appearing. Thus, what is wanted when coming out of this experience and dealing with phenomena is the maintenance of a mind that does, that still does not find them under this analysis. So, dealing with phenomena does not mean dealing with them through ignorance.
So this is the end of the section on the third stanza. The objection that follows is the lead-in to the fourth stanza. We're still within this heading because the objector is switching over if we go to our imagination the objection is switching to the verb is being gone over rather than the area the being gone over the objector is is going to the area. So we have to notice that the first part of the objection is now done. The objector is now switching, which is what we often do. Um, You know, oh, well, I'm not going to say, and, and we probably felt that, well, you know, forget about the area, the being going over. Uh, I'm going to switch and say, uh, it, it, you know, the, the, the important one is, is the goer, and, and the goer has got the action. So uh, we'll... Um, I don't know whether next time, maybe next time, if I can get it together, we should switch back to Song of a next time, and because we're hot on this, and see what how Tsongaba treats this first part of the objection. Jeffrey, can I ask a question about the process? As yes. As I think about, as I think about this, it seems that in the non-climbing there's two stages. Like you have to understand what you're holding. Yes. Understand then that what you were holding is not there. Yes. Absolutely. So is this is this sort of analysis such that those are simultaneous understandings, or or what? I mean, process-wise, yeah. how does that come to the mind? Uh, I think there's all sorts of uh, varieties here, and uh, I think it can take a long time. Uh, you've, you, you can be repelled, uh, you can be, uh, get some inkling of, uh, as you say, what you're holding and have no sense of non-finding, uh, and just getting your bearings on what Nagarjuna and, and, excuse me, Chandrakirti are talking about. And, you know, I wonder if there's somebody who could put it together so fast that there'd be a non-finding, but I think more likely than not, uh, it would, that one would be just deluded. That, that your, your mind would be passing on to something else and you'd think, oh yeah, I didn't find it. And that's great. I've realized emptiness. And what's for lunch? Uh, you know, uh, that some vacuity 
of stupidity would appear to one's mind. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, or even vacuity of, I don't want to think about this. And you might think you've, you know, this is too awful to think about. Or I already knew that words were inadequate to express experience. Uh, and therefore, you were just affirming uh, non-analysis non and living your own stupid life and getting angry when uh, somebody walked too close in front of you on, you know, wherever you were. Or, or you know, never mind, push you. I'm usually amazed at how impolite people are uh, nowadays. Uh, you know, we were taught to give way on the sidewalk. And uh, as somebody who's in a semi-wheelchair position at Costco, uh, how people don't even want to give way to an electric cart, uh, or, you know, or never, or on the... At first I thought in Taiwan, um, you know, people just plain don't give way at all. It's just like water. Wherever there's space, water goes in, and then I realized, oh, Charlottesville's like this too. Oh, Vancouver's like this too. <laughs> you know, people <laughs> just... <laughs> Actually the, first, actually, the first time I saw it was in a, in a supermarket in uh, Switzerland, of all places. And a woman was just in front of me. <laughs> Later I wondered, was she trying to pick me up? <laughs> and I thought, no, no. She just wanted to get to, to where she was going. <laughs> and... Uh, and, you know, that kind of noticing, you see, has uh, totally indicates totally not being in a mind of, of uh, not finding, uh, <laughs> going and coming and, and, you know, totally being out of, of uh, illusion-like realization. Totally. And... Uh, you know, you would still notice, and you know, you don't have to become dumb about about the loss of civility. You know, you don't have to become <laughs> stupid, but uh, you wouldn't experience it the way I do of of like shock of of lack of manners, uh, <laughs> and and the shock of other people's. Uh, sense of my being stupid because I give way, uh, have some manners when I do. I'm trying to learn that if I'm going to be in the flow of things, I'm just going to have to barge in. <laughs> Learning how to barge <laughs> and being in a state of, do I really want to barge? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe do I really it should be do I really want to not be doing a little bit of meditation <laughs> so anyway yes very good point it's uh, to be instantaneous would be very difficult and I would caution um, that the, you know, it's like looking for the, looking too hard for the object of negation. Actually, as His Holiness said, when you think Madhyamaka is wrong, and you think, what could be more true than the way I ordinarily see things? that you're making some progress in Madhyamaka. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Madhyamak is just playing going to be wrong. <laughs> then you're making some progress. These things have to exist the way they appear. You know, any, even you're not putting it in those words. <laughs> there couldn't be any law. <laughs> Society couldn't function. My life couldn't function. You know, it's like in the background. <laughs> See you next time.